And we are back for the final round of the 1994 season. And we are here at the Australian Grand Prix at the Adelaide Street Circuit. Of course, F1 did not move to the Melbourne Street Circuit until the 1996 season. So we've got Adelaide for at least this year and next year, according to Real Life F1. But of course, Custom F1 is anything but Real Life F1. We've had a shaky season, our debut season as the team Streamline Engineering, which I created and entered onto the grid for this year. Uh, we did not start with much money. We are going to end in minus figures. So what we need to do for next season, we, there's a couple of options. We could either use our 1994 car for 1995, strike a deal with a higher up team to maybe become a feeder team for them for a couple of seasons. Uh, and in response they will give us some money to keep us afloat of course and supply us with drivers from their youth systems that's a possibility as well or we could just find a pay driver or better sponsors that's always an option uh, but right now we're going to finish this season in about minus 2000 currency I have no idea what current our made up currency it's got no name it's just minus 2000 but we're on a qualifying lap here it's been a bit shaky it's up on my previous best and my previous best was not good at all I don't have much pace around the circuit, but it is a very, very enjoyable track. I've never actually driven here before until turning up today as Mika Salo. But across the line, it's going to be a 121.142. It's 26th place at the moment. But where are we on the starting grid? And here are the qualifying results for the final race of the 1994 season. Michael Schumacher is back to the top of the starting order with pole position today. Damon Hill in second place and... Of course, champion of 1994, Ayrton Senna starting in third place. Then we have the two Ferraris of Reith and, oh, sorry, Alesi and Reith. Hakkinen in sixth place. Jos Verstappen all the way down in seventh with his teammate in first. There's a big gap between them in terms of time as well. Martin Brundle in the second McLaren in eighth place with Blundell in ninth. De Cesaris running at the top ten. Olivier Panis the only Ligier in the top half of the standings in eleventh place. We have the two Jordans sandwiching the Sauber so Rubens Barrichello in 12th and Eddie Irvine in 14th with Heinz Harald Frentzen in the Sauber sandwiched between. Moving on to the second half of the grid we have the second Tyrrell of Katayama starting from 15th followed by the two footworks Morbidelli ahead of Fittipaldi the second Ligier of Bernard in 18th place Beretta and Mahendra on the 10th row of the grid Mahendra once again impressing in qualifying he's had a few storming qualifying performances in the latter half of the season Michele Alboreto and Pierre Luigi Martini, the two Minardis, on the following row of the grid. Eric Comas down in 23rd. Then it's Ratzenberger and Brabham, the two Simtex. And at the back of the grid, as has been the case for the majority of the season, the Lotus cars. Herbert in 26th, Adams in 28th, and Salo, back to back 27th place finishes in qualifying. He starts from 27th place, three and a half seconds off the pole time. So here we are in Australia at the Adelaide Street Circuit in Adelaide. It's a 3.78 kilometre circuit, so it's quite small, only featuring 16 corners, and that's why we have a mammoth 81 laps ahead of us in dry conditions throughout the entire Grand Prix. Mikasala going for a two-stop strategy, pitting on lap 20 and lap 50, with his teammate Mahendra pitting on lap 34. Well, there's only one more thing to do, and that's go racing. The 1994 Australian Grand Prix is next. And here we are on the grid, awaiting the lights. You can just about see them in the distance. The 1994 Australian Grand Prix is underway. And of course, we're starting really far down the grid. And we almost run straight into the back of the Simtag ahead of me. I think it was uh, Brabham, but we've gone around the outside of a few drivers into the first corner. This left, right, left chicane. And the curves are very high. You don't want to get caught on those. You can easily spin the car. And I've already gained a few positions into the next right-hander. It's a 90-degree right-hander. And on this opening lap, quite a few drivers really slowing down, trying to sort out the pack, trying to sort themselves out, make sure there's no contact between drivers. And we're already up to 21st place. So I've already gained six, pos six positions off the start. I can see my teammate in 19th place as well. So it, you could say it's a very successful start for the Streamline Engineering team today. 
I don't think we're going to score any points today, but you, you never know. We've not scored any points throughout the season. Of course, the top six drivers get points back in 1994, uh, and we've never had the car really to compete for points apart from the Italian Grand Prix, which was a one-off exception, I'd say. But down the back straight for the first time. This is the best overtaking opportunity. It's down towards a hairpin, a right-hander. And we got the inside of the LaRousse of Olivier Beretta. Almost look up the inside of my teammate Mahendra as well. But we're up into the top 20 now. So 19th and 20th for the Streamline team on the opening lap of this Grand Prix. That's very successful. And here's the start from the leader's perspective. Pulsar to Michael Schumacher getting away cleanly and leads down towards turn one. Second place belongs to Damon Hill and third. Ayrton Senna just fending off the charging Ferrari of John Alesi as we round into the fourth corner. Damon Hill looking up the inside of Michael Schumacher. No move on there. As we know, the real-life counterpart of this race, Schumacher and Hill, crashed. Will it happen in this one? I've had a good start. It's lap two, but now... All the drivers coming back at me. Beretta trying to send it up the inside. There's a bit of contact there between me and the LaRousse of Beretta. And he sides his way up the inside into that right-hander of turn four. And I'm down to 21st. Martini has a run on me down towards the hairpin. And under braking, I don't actually see him there. It's a very late move there by the Minardi. But he manages to squeeze it up the inside. And now I'm down to 22nd. I've got his teammate Michele Alboreto only a couple tenths behind me lap 8 of this Grand Prix. Martini has pulled away. I'm really under pressure here from the other Minardi of Alboreto and heading towards this left right chicane. Alboreto sends it up the inside contact between me and the Minardi I go into the other wall as well. I thought I had damage. I, apparently I don't have too much damage. I can't tell if it was a racing incident or my fault or Alboreto's fault. Anyway we've lost a lot of positions and a lot of time. Okay, it's clear there is a bit of suspension damage. It doesn't seem too bad as I outbreak myself into the hairpin and I'm going to lose that final position to Johnny Herbert. That means we are now 28th and last of the running order. And with the damage, I don't think we're too much faster than the Lotus cars anymore. I am, however, lining up an overtake on lap 11 up the inside of Johnny Herbert into the hairpin where a few laps earlier I actually outbroke myself and lost the position to Herbert. We've gained that back now as teammate Philippe Adams who's having a race that's under the radar, is in 26th, three and a half seconds up the road. And lap 13, I'm allowing Michael Schumacher to lap me, so I'm already one lap down on the race lead. As we break into the first corner, I've run straight into the back of the Benetton, and I spin into the wall. That's a heavy incident there. Luckily, not wiping out the um, leader as Herbert collects me on his way through. I'm now blocking Damon Hill as well, the Williams. I allow him through, but that's massive suspension damage, and I fear... That may be the end of my Australian Grand Prix. We'll see if we can carry on. So I'm bringing the car into the pits to repair what damage I possibly can repair. Schumacher, I think he may have broke a bit too early or I broke myself. I went straight into the back of him. That could have been a very, very embarrassing incident wiping out the race leader. But luckily for Schumacher, he carries on. Unluckily for me, I'm now 17 seconds off the pace and off the back of Herbert. And I'm now getting lapped by the uh, midfield cars. It's Beretta versus Mahendra on lap 19, but it's all going to come undone for Olivier Beretta as he rounds this right-hander. That looks to be either driver error and stalling the car or possibly brake failure. Either way, he's out of this race. Here we are at a quarter race distance, looking at 10th uh, place Heinzold Frenzen right now, but Michael Schumacher has had a commanding lead throughout the first 20 laps. Senna in second now, ahead of Hill. Verstappen up to fourth from starting down his seventh place. Zomba Reith just on the outskirts of the points. Lap 21 and here's Ukyo Katayama stopping on track. Possibly suspension failure. There's the Ligier trying uh, to go around the outside to clear that car. But he's out of the race. It's lap 22. I'm losing so much time to Herbert. I've lost about 10 seconds in the past few laps. And as I get caught on the kerb here, I lose grip heavily into the wall. Losing my rear wing. And as you all know, that cannot be repaired. And that's the end of my Australian Grand Prix. Race leader Schumacher into the pits, and that will allow the Williams of Ayrton Senna to take the lead of the race. I thought it was going to be Damon Hill, but Senna must have overtaken Hill during that first stint. Senna into the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. Schumacher had a great lead before that pit stop, and it's the lap after he's come out of the pits. It's looking good for Schumacher for another win this season. Of course, he can't win the championship anymore because Senna's already... Oh no, Schumacher's into the wall! Schumacher's out! He's lost it on the exit of that corner. Going on to the back straight, Schumacher has retired from this race. 
Senna now into the pits for his first out of, I assume, two scheduled stops and Damon Hill is released into the lead of the race. Damon Hill already with one race victory under his belt this season. Could he possibly strive for two? Not looking good for Hakkinen coming into the pits with a faulty sounding gearbox and, yep, he's out of the race. Hakkinen retires due to gearbox failure. I think Hill might be on a one-stop strategy. It's lap 36. He's under pressure from his teammate Senna, who's closed the gap to him. And they've got the Tyrrell of, I believe, that's Katayama in front of them. And Senna's managed to make his way through. And now Hill with the slipstream down the back straight may be looking for the move back up the inside into the hairpin. It's a great overtaking opportunity. And the Williams of Hill is taking that opportunity side by side with his teammate, the world champion for this season, Ayrton Senna. And Hill back into the race lead, but Senna's not giving this fight up. What a brilliant battle between the two Williams teammates. And Hill just about takes that position back, but Senna back to the inside. This will be a move into the final corner, turn 16. It's another hairpin, and it's Adelaide Street Circuit. And Senna back into the lead of this Grand Prix. Halfway through this marathon of a race, Senna leads for Stappen up into a podium position now. And Reith is up into the points positions, possibly on... Uh, track to score his first ever points in Formula 1, the rookie and the sole streamline of Kai Mahendra down in 19th place right now. Lap 45 and Senna rejoining the track after his second and final pit stop. Uh, clear of second place man Jos Verstappen, Damon Hill has been into the pits a few laps earlier. I think Verstappen hasn't been in for his second stop yet. So the Dutchman is up into second place. Irvine suffering the same fate as Hakkinen earlier on in the race. Irvine pulling into the pits, retiring once again due to gearbox failure. Approaching the final few laps of this race. Well, when I say final few laps, oh wow, big crash there. De Cesare is heavily into the wall. I was going to say he's going well so far, almost into the top 10, but he's out of the race now. Lap 56 and Morbidelli slowly coming into the pits to retire his car. It's the third car of this Grand Prix to retire due to gearbox failure. Here we are at three-quarter race distance and we're looking at the battle for the final points position between the rookie of Zomba Reef and Heinz Harald Frenzen in the Sauber. Of course, the Ferrari has retired from the past two races, his first two races. Is it third time lucky for Reef? Can he hold on? Can he finish in the points? Lap 67 and we're looking at second place man Damon Hill who's who's had brake failure, massive brake failure at the hairpin at the end of the back straight. Hill heavily into the wall and it's out to the Australian Grand Prix. David Brabham having a solid race so far. Only two laps to go. No, never mind. Off the track at the final corner. That looks to be brake failure just like Damon Hill a few laps prior and David Brabham is out of this race. And after 81 laps of racing and thousands of laps of racing throughout this season, the final corner has presented itself and Senna crosses the line to win the 1994 Australian Grand Prix and close out the year in the best way possible. And here are the race classification. Uh, at the end of the Australian Grand Prix and the end of the 1994 season, Senna wins yet again. That sums up the season he's had and he's reached the 100 point mark. I think he's finished on 104 points. John Alazy in second place. Martin Brundle is a, a finally another team other than Ferrari, Benetton or Williams on the podium. And it's happened at the final race. Martin Brundle, who's been Mr. Consistent this year, finishes in third. Frentzen up in fourth. Barrichello in fifth. And Verstappen suffering a brake failure really late on apparently. Slips down to sixth place. Zomba Reith, he's had three races this season. Two retirements. He's finally got a race finish but he has failed to score points. Not bad though, seventh place for the rookie. Mark Blundell in eighth, then it's the two Ligiers, Panis and Bernard, and then the two Minardis, Alberetta and Martini. We had 18 finishes, which has been quite high, and has been, um, well, we've had quite a few races this season with high amounts of finishes, surprisingly, considering the actual reliability of the cars. I think there was a few races where we had up to 24 cars finishing. Here are the driver's standings for the final time this season. Senna claims the championship, but well, he claimed it the other race. So Senna is 1994 world champion. He becomes a four-time world champion and has now won a world championship with two different constructors, those being McLaren and Williams. He also broke past the 100 points mark, which in seasons like this with reliability not being the highest is an incredible milestone an incredible season from Senna Schumacher finishes comfortably in second place and a lazy holds on to that third place at the end it's quite
quite close between third, fourth and fifth, but a lazy in third, for Verstappen in fourth, Damon Hill, who, if the season was carrying on for any more races, would have certainly been out for the rest of the season with a big crash today at the hairpin. Uh, with brake failure he finishes in fifth in the championship martin brundle with that third place today uh, is in sixth place a very good season for brundle and gerhard berger only managing five races this season but still claims seventh place in the championship quite amusingly out of the 28 drivers on here there's four that have driven for ferrari and that means there is absolutely no simtech cars and i think there is no larouche drivers either on the top 28 uh, which is quite amusing so Zomba Reed's re um, result today means that he actually finishes in the top 20 in the championship of course it's a no contest because he has not scored any points only 17 drivers scoring points I was hoping for a few more but hopefully next season uh, the, the teams will be closer together and reliability might not be as good I don't know and maybe we'll see some more points finishers now on to the constructor standings Williams win the constructors championship there is no denying that benetton finish in second still it was relatively close ferrari were up there for well at least the start of the season maybe the first six or seven races but slowly drifted away and mclaren started out performing them in the second half of the year mclaren comfortably in fourth tyrrell in fifth ahead of Sauber, Ligier and Jordan, only eight teams out of 14 scoring points. I was hoping, like I said earlier, for more teams and drivers to score points, but maybe next year. And that, everybody, is the end of the first season of Custom F1. 1995 will be here in a matter of a few weeks. Thank you all for the continued support on the series. The channel has really grown since this series was launched back in November and hopefully it will continue to grow. Uh, 1995 is going to be, in terms of quality, so much higher than this season. I just cannot wait to start 1995. If you want the results um, for the youth drive, well, at least the uh, feeder series, just join the Discord. I'll post it there because I don't want to make a graphic and stick up on screen now because it's a bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, if you want to know that, just head over to the Discord. I'll put it in the Custom F1 channel. Uh, make sure to join the Discord if you're not already a member. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And give the video a like. Leave a comment down below uh, what your favourite race was this season. I think my favourite race it would have to be maybe the Italian Grand Prix. Only because it was so crazy and we almost scored points. Uh, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.